In this video, we're going to have a look at two very useful automation features available in Pro Tools HD, Capture and Punch. Capture allows you to capture all currently writing automation parameters, or it can also be forced to capture all parameters across all tracks in the session, irrespective of whether those tracks are currently writing automation or not. Once you've captured those settings, the punch button allows you to start writing those parameters at another location in the session. So let's just have a look at the basic operation of this. The tracks which you can see on screen here have no audio on them, but it will just serve as a demonstration. So say for example, I'm writing automation, and I might do this in the mixer so it's more obvious what I'm doing. So I might be writing you know, volume, I might be writing pan. So I'm just going to establish some settings for each of these. Okay, and maybe I'm even writing EQ. And any parameters which you are writing need to be enabled here in the automation window. So I'm just going to establish some settings for that plugin, maybe establish some for this one. Okay, that'll do. Okay, and once I've established which settings I'm actually wanting to capture, then I click on the capture button. Okay, and now what that's done is it's captured all currently writing parameters and I can subsequently punch those in at another location in the session. So if I go over here, you can see that the settings at the moment are, you know, just flat. I'll open these two EQs. Incidentally, when I did click the capture button, you'll notice that the punch capture button highlighted to indicate that something has been captured and it's ready for actually dropping in somewhere else. So let's run it and wherever I want to drop it in, I can just click on punch capture. And as you can see, the settings which I previously captured have now been dropped in at that point and all tracks have started writing those parameters from that point. You could potentially use this over a selected range. So that range might, for example, represent the duration of a scene. And so I could start it running, click on punch capture, then I could use the manual write to selection command and it will actually write it across that entire duration. So I've quickly written all parameters across an entire range of the timeline. And you can see that as soon as we get to that section where I've written it, all the parameters will jump to the previously captured parameters. So it can be useful. However, it's not as useful as it could be because we chose to just click on the capture button and it captured all currently writing parameters and that might be useful, however, I would say it's got slightly limited applications. So a better use for it would be to capture not just stuff which is currently writing, but to be able to capture all parameters across the mixer on tracks, whether they're writing or not. So you could essentially copy all the settings from one section of the mix to another. And that's what we're going to have a look at next. So I've mocked up some audio here, which is two separate scenes. Firstly, we've got an interior scene which happens inside a club and there's an argument going on. So during the scene, we've got a little bit of reverb on the voices. We've got the sound of people in the club and we've also got uh, the music on the sound system. It then cuts to scene two, which is a conversation which takes place outside the building. And again, we've got dialogue. There's a different, more subtle reverb on this and the interior voices at this point are dropped down in level. Uh, we've got the addition of exterior voices and we've also got the sound of the city backdrop and at this point I've currently automated the music so it changes in its tonal quality. Uh, I'll just show you a little bit of this now actually. And because I've cut this together from two separate projects for demonstration purposes it's only actually scene two where there's any video so you just have to use your imagination for scene one. But I'll, I'll run the audio just to show you the differences in the uh, automation which I've used. Shit! You won't see her. I will see you. Why? Why can't I? You can't. Why can't you tell me where she is? Hey, love, wait there a sec. Oh, you're running out pretty fast, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just heading home. Okay, so I'll stop it there. But basically, there's a number of things which have changed from one scene to the next. Firstly, the reverb on the dialogue has changed. So we've got different sends here to two different reverbs, okay? And so in scene one, we're sending on this reverb, and in scene two, we're using the other one. So that's one thing which is different. We've also got a major one, which is the interior voices. They drop right down so that they're not even in the mix in scene two. 
And the other thing is the sound of the music changes to give it an exterior sound on the second part. So this is what it sounds like transitioning from scene one to scene two. And I've done that with this uh, Kill EQ plugin. And in this project, we actually alternate between scene one and scene two. So we've got scene one here, scene two here, then it goes back into the interior and I've called it scene one B. Then we come back outside and see more discussion outside the club, which I call scene 2B. And so at the moment, the automation isn't correct for this part of the mix. So I'll just run this. So when it goes back to the interior, currently the music doesn't change its sound. We've still got the exterior voices in the mix and the interior voices don't come back. So here's what it sounds like at the moment. I'm working on it. Is this some sick game? Let's go. I'm not going anywhere! Okay, so what I basically want to do here is take the parameters from scene 1 and capture them and write them to scene 1B. And we're going to do that now. So if I start this running, the difference here is that I'm not just going to click on the capture button, I'm going to option click on the capture button. And what that'll do is capture every single parameter. So it doesn't matter if they're writing or not. And as you can see, nothing is writing at the moment because the automation's already been written. So all the tracks are in read, but you could have a combination of some in read, some in write, some in touch, latch, whatever you want. So let's run this. Where is she? Option click capture. You won't see her. Okay, and it probably wasn't too evident there what happened because we already had uh, something captured previously, but it will have captured all of the settings across the entire mixer. Now I'm going to use some memory locations, which I previously set up, to select the entire duration of scene 1B. And at this point, I'm actually going to option click on the punch button and you'll see that all tracks have gone into auto latch mode. It's white text on a red background, which indicates that those tracks are actually primed for writing. I'm going to run this. Is this some sick game? Let's go. I'm not going anywhere. Tell me, just tell me. Okay, and what you'll see there is the parameters, as we expected, jumped from what they previously were to the parameters that we wanted to write and so we've essentially imposed on this other part of the mix the parameters from earlier so if i run this into that scene from here you'll see and hear that happening i'm working on it is this some sick game let's go i'm not going anywhere tell me just tell me how about it okay and at the moment we've got the similar issue here now. Um, the automation, certainly on the music and probably on other things as well, isn't right. How about it? Thanks for coming out. Okay, so we need to capture the settings from scene two now. So same again. I'll run that. I'll oh. option click the capture button. Run out pretty fast, aren't you? Then I'm going to select everything from scene two onwards, like that. You don't need to make the selection across all tracks. You know, you just need to have a selection and start that well i could start it running or i could option click as i did before the punch button i think i'll do that and once again auto latch mode start it running how about it Fancy coming if we out. didn't want to have to wait for it to run you sure you don't know what you're missing we could click on the sure manual right to selection you should definitely have fun for it. and then we can stop it and it's actually written those parameters across the entire duration so again, transitioning from scene 1B into scene 2B, you'll see and hear those parameters jump to what they should be for that scene. Just tell me. How about it? Fancy coming out? Oh, thank you, no. Are you sure? You don't know what you're missing. So that's just one way that you can use capture and punch in Pro Tools. There is actually a lot more to this window than meets the eye because certain commands are accessible by holding down one or more modifier keys whilst clicking one of the buttons, but we'll address some of those in a separate video. So that's a very brief overview of capture and punch in Pro Tools. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next time.